Good morning uh, to you both, Phil and Simon. Thank you for inviting me to, here today to come and uh, explore your new technology and your innovation that's been going on. I know there's been a lot of sweat and blood gone into Very this, much so. <laughs> um, which we're going to discuss shortly. So for the benefit of our audience and the people listening, it'd be good to get some background. So we, we start with Phil because he's sitting next to me okay, so and he's ready to go. So Phil Barnett, so um, been with Honeywell about three and a half years. Um, my background's um, PLCs, effectively, and um, you know, hopefully today's session is going to introduce connected power, and as you say, blood, sweat and tears. We've seen it grow from a kind of concept idea to a sort of deployed solution that's being rolled out globally. So yeah, looking forward to having a chat with you. How long have you been in the industry, Dennis? So PLCs, um, probably 25 years. Right. Um, I've, I've not really known building management, so through my um, career with Honeywell, I've kind of hooked into building management. So really excited to see where that's going and the new innovations that Honeywell can bring to. And have you seen a lot of innovation through those many years uh, uh, regarding PLCs? Yes, definitely. So from the kind of small kind of isolated systems to a fully integrated sort of portfolio monitoring multiple sites multiple buildings um you know things are going globally um so yeah absolutely it's, it's exponential growth if I, if I can touch on my experience of plc's when i look back when i was growing up in in the industry plc's the only people that could afford a plc with the big power stations in them days and then we've seen it gradually evolve to the, the you know the, the convenience store yes. nowadays has plc's controlling whatever so it's a massive oh, vast absolutely. yeah you know, and you're right a plc now can be the corner shop to the corporate you know multiple billion pound exactly. company so it's you know we have a solution that covers a complete market um, from the small to the you know massive corporate Brilliant. We're going to touch more on that shortly, so for the benefit of our audience again, can yep. we listen? So I'm, I'm Simon, uh, I've been with Honeywell for five years now. Um, I had a complete career change prior to prior to this, so I, I retrained as a Spark. I was a, as was, was a PE teacher beforehand. Wow. Um, and I decided, no, I need to need to have a full, full career change. So I, I went to night school, um, retrained as a spark, and then we've been here ever since. So started off in a, sort of the technical sales role, and now I'm sort of the application engineer slash technical support for, for our new product, Connected Power. Well, that is a big difference. Yeah. From yeah. there to there. Oh, yeah, huge difference. So I, I taught for 10 years, and uh, yeah, it just got, got too much. I needed, right. needed to have a complete change. Um, so, so yeah, and now I'm in the, the world of corporate business with uh, with Honeywell. And you're really enjoying this role. Love it, love it. Yeah, so I've I've got a national role, um, so I get to travel the country. But as of late, it's been more overseas travels as well now. Uh, so kind of branching out with that. So yeah, get to see lots of new people, new companies, get to travel the world. So for yeah. me, it's it's brilliant. And you're at the sharp end of it all with the with the application. Yep. And feels in the in the dark, developing all the systems and in the back office side. So let's start in the back office. So let's hear about what's, what's gone, first of all, what's gone into this innovation. So uh, basically, obviously, um, MK Honeywell came from like traditional sockets, but realizing that energy need to be, needed to be controlled. So we kind of, when we first brought out connected power, it was a, a sort of custom, what they know, a supervisor for, for um, just, just to prove a concept. What then happened is that pro concept worked very well actually, and then we moved it into the sort of corporate Honeywell supervisor team. And that's where it gained massive momentum because you've got this global software team um, that, that basically can produce um, a, a robust solution from a concept. So yeah, we've, again, you're talking about blood, sweat and tears. We've seen it from initial concept right through to what it is today. And yeah, I, I work quite closely with Simon. Um, he's in touch with customers. So I work with the development team. We're able to flex quite a bit and provide what the customer needs. So I'm quite proud of what we've produced. And the fact that it's going globally, that kind of shows the sort of take up so it's, it, it's been a, it's been a, not a bumpless journey, but yeah, it's been yeah. an enjoyable journey. What's, what's been the drivers for all this? 
Um, so basically, um, re really the solution is about monitoring. Often in a building, people don't really know what's going on. You know, you walk through our site at Basildon, you know, this thing's being left on. Um, people don't know, um, they, they, we don't traditionally in the UK turn off outlets when we're not using them. And really this solution applies that um, option of, right, I'm gonna show you what you're using and then it gives you insights to then turn things off. So it's about energy saving, it's about monitoring, it's about you know identifying areas where you might not necessarily know what you're doing. So it, it's really, um, it's, it's all about data. You know, it's a digital world now and yeah. it's giving you that insight. I always say you cannot manage what you don't measure. Exactly, yes. And you know, when we look at the socket, yes. Or as it was as such we've seen it evolve you know the whole industry in this smart automation area has, has evolved massively yeah. there's been isolated areas where we've seen it been developing um, but for me you as you know Honeywell MK that are driving this now I think that says a lot for the industry yeah, I, I also think as well, we talked about it earlier when we discussed, you know, when you look at a building, everyone thinks about lighting, they think about yeah. heat, heating, HVAC, low power and what people are plugging in, you know, that's a significant amount of the energy footprint of the building. Mm. Um, you know, this connected power provides that insight and then the ability to do something about it, which is, you know, where it gains its uh, differentiation. If we went about the drivers of this, so. I've done energy assessments for many years now, but say five years ago when I was going around there, the biggest thing we was focusing on it was lighting, yes. LED lights. Well, what's happened now is we've brought that power down so much with LEDs, and all of a sudden, Wait, all these other yeah, yeah, but all these other areas are coming up, and you yeah, think, yeah. oh, what's that load there? Yes. Out of ours. It yes. can't be the lights because we've got them all controlled properly. And, and this, is, this is what we say to customers. You've taken care of your lighting, you've taken care of your HVAC, and because you've reduced that percentage, your actual overall percentage of your building for your small power has increased. Yeah. So actually it's a huge, huge quantity of electricity that is potentially being wasted. Um, and and that's, that was the big driver behind it. We, we, we noticed that the, the actual wiring devices market hadn't really changed in quite yeah. some time. Yeah. Where do we see this going in 10 years time? What, what do we want to understand from our buildings? And that was one of the key drivers in developing a connected solution. And before we, we go down that route of the, the application side of it, where did this, who was the original, who's the person that said, right, I'm gonna champion this now? Um, we, we have some offering managers that, that connect with customers. So there was a lot of customers that said, like you say, we've done the heating, we've done the lot, what's the next thing? And you know, through MK and Honeywell's connection, you know, MK was traditionally into um, uh, end, end devices. So we've, we've pulled that into a BMS. If you went back 10 years, you know, um, sockets aren't traditionally or were never pulled into a BMS. So it was the next, right, we've done everything else, let's look at this low power. Um, and it's and it's really you know it's it, it it's what people want to do. It's the next yeah. you know they've done everything they need to do. Um, yeah. So th this has been more than an innovation and a concept. We're now making it real, and this is where you come yes. into it, isn't it? Yeah. So we've 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 got this out there already. It's yep. been yep, it's trialed and been uh, used and, and tested in certain yep. areas. The results we're getting back are significantly. Yes, yeah, we get some, some very good results. Um, so we're, we're working alongside lots of different verticals. So we have hospitality, we have um, healthcare, we have education that we're working alongside. Um, what, what has been interesting is it's not always about the energy savings for some of our customers. Some of it is more having that insights and having collecting the data, understanding what's going on in their building. So there's, there's key drivers from our solution. It's not all always about the energy savings. Um, and that, that's been something we've, we've really noticed um, just by talking to our customers, understanding what their, their pain points are and their, their pinch points are. And, yeah. and this solution seems to cover quite an array of different, um, different areas that, that meets their expectation. This does actually depend on what the application has been used for because yep. we've seen higher than that in certain areas yep. up to 60 percent and down to low where you you know you've got smaller things plugged into it maybe exactly so see it depends on on the environment if you if you if you're looking at sort of offices 
with all of your, your monitors on and you want to turn them off out, out of hours from standby, obviously it's a very small load. But mm. if you've then got a very large office or multiple offices, that can that small load soon um, extrapolates up to, to quite some significant figures. The interesting thing about this product, it, it's good for new builds yep. and it's good for retrofit. It's quite a straightforward. Yeah. How easy is it to implement the system? Yeah, so we, we have obviously been a traditional wiring manufacturer. We have made sure that it fits into a 25 mil back box, that right. it can use the existing cabling that is there. So from a retrofit perspective, 100% retrofitable. Um, it, it communicates on a, on a wireless mesh to a hub and that's the only thing that wouldn't require power and an ethernet port to take it back to the, the BMS. So it can be installed left on site uh, before your system integrator comes and does the, the, the magic to bring it back into the BMS as such. But yeah, it, it can work as a traditional socket during that, that downtime. Yeah. As soon as it's brought into the BMS, that's when you're collecting all the data. Does it have to link to a BMS system? At the moment, yes. However, we are looking at future developments yeah. um, to, to be able to we, we understand that we're where our market is. Yeah. Not all of our multi-site um, stores have BMSs on site. So we, we are looking at uh, other ways of being able to develop it. For, for so there was going to be my question back to you, Phil. I presume there's a roadmap yeah, for this. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. So it always we, is going to yeah, be there. We, so, you know, Honeywell has an absolutely colossus roadmap. So, you know, we, we have a development team that sit, um, that sit and we take, I mean, one of the good things with Honeywell, we listen to our customers um, and, we, and we we basically connect with them. You know, this this has been installed on a lot of beta sites and proof of value. That that does two things. It basically, um, although we test it um, extensively in house, um, some of the issues you get are when it's deployed on site, and and sometimes we don't totally understand the customer's application. So the good thing is because this is a software solution, because it's in a BMS we can pull that knowledge and those requirements for the customer and um, evolve. So yeah, on, talking about the roadmap, you know, this is going globally. We've got launches in the US, we've got launches, you know, outside the UK. We've got a second iteration coming on the UK. Um, we've got different um, technologies uh, going into it. Um, and, and we're also looking, as Simon touched on, small buildings. We're looking at a small non-BMS solution as opposed to a medium or large building that has a BMS. So we're catering for all, all our customer requirements. And and I think the good, um, our, our solution um, is with Trend in the UK, it's with other supervisors in the US, but also what Honeywell traditionally do is they're, they're very much into scalability and compatibility. So we realise a customer might start small, but our solution is scalable or it can stay standalone. Yeah. So we, we, we um, incorporate all that kind of compatibility and expandability. And that again, that's what we're kind of proud of and what we do. My background's trend. And we used to always boast that it's like a Lego set. Yes, yes. Put one little bit in and then you start adding to it. Yes. And that's the way, you yeah. know, BMS systems and this yeah. can, can evolve with it. Absolutely. You can start with, you know, like Simon says, 10 sockets up to sort of two and a half thousand and then you go sort of corporate wide and enterprise so you know it's, it's totally scannable. Before we dive into the technology which is look, you're getting yeah. excited already look yeah, yeah. ladies day. It's very you're. passionate. Yeah. <laughs> Before we really dive into can I throw a curveball question yeah. in? Yeah. How many sockets are out there in the UK maybe installed? Is that a figure that you would know? Not, not offhand. I mean, I do but know. You're the technical I, I person. You should one, one of the sort of um, universities we're dealing with has has in excess of two and a half million, and that's one university. Right. So you can imagine the kind of scale. I don't know offhand. I probably should know my background, but yeah. So you know, they, they are literally millions. Millions. Yeah. Probably billions. Yeah. 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 When you when you think of all the high rise buildings, if if you're looking at just the the commercial sector. Yeah. In particular, we've, we've done some work with some um, laboratories where they've just got sockets all the way across their, their wall. Yeah. Nothing plugged into them because yeah. they're there for test purposes and depending on what equipment they've got. Um, so if you kind of scale that up across the UK, there's yeah, a significant <laughs> number, that's for sure. Um, right, so I think now it's time for us to really delve in. Let's get nitty yeah. gritty with the technology Thanks. and let's talk about the application. Yeah. Brilliant. 
Today we're going to talk about connected power. So here we have our training rig that we use uh, on shows or for customers. So what we have here is we have our um, socket range. So on connected power we have a number of variants. Metal clad, both metal and white. We have our traditional Logic Plus, grey and white, and our floor box. So we're covering all deployments within a building environment, whether it be desk, laboratory or office. In terms of communication protocols, effectively we commission the system using Bluetooth, so we talk to the hub and we talk to the sockets. Once we deploy that information, the system on its own sets up a Myra mesh secure network, so all of our sockets uh, route through to the hub and that hub goes to our supervisor. Just want to talk about that Myra mesh. It's on a Bluetooth frequency and it actually employs what's known as an adaptive frequency hopping. So although it's running on 2.4 gigs, it searches for a frequency and it allows it to be robust, not clash with data, and it really, really means we have a tight, um, reliable communications. So that's a small overview of the system. What we have here is our connected power solution. Um, effectively, we are monitoring every single outlet um, for instantaneous power, accumulated power, um, and temperature. Not only are we monitoring all these aspects, we have the ability to control the outlet as well. Um, so that is all controlled from the BMS, or alternatively, it is controlled locally at the socket. Um, so on our demo wall here, what we have got, um, this socket, for example, is unlocked, so I can turn the socket on and off. However, down the bottom, we have a socket that is locked in the on position and locked in the off position, which is controlled via our BMS. This enables us to um, turn items off out of hours. Um, it also enables us to have critical equipment where it is either always permanently turned on or, for example, in waiting areas in hospitals where we have cleaners sockets where we don't want people plugging in, we have the option as of the building management system to lock that socket off so it can only be used in certain situations. Um, with regards to the actual system as a whole, as I said, we, um, as I mentioned, we have the temperature sensor in there. The reason we um, want the temperature sensor in there is that there's over 20,000 commercial fires a year. Okay, and that is uh, caused by a potential loose cable in the back of the socket. It is also caused by the um, uh, sometimes the actual plugs themselves where it has worked loose over time. So we have built in a temperature sensor that monitors the um, ambient temperature in the back of the socket. With us monitoring it, we have the ability from the BMS to also control it. Yet again, if it reaches a certain temperature threshold, it can automatically lock off and it can't be turned back on. Turning that appliance off, making sure that the safety of that appliance and the safety of the people within that building is paramount. Um, if I go back a little bit to the actual um, power consumption um, and the fact that it is an energy meter for every single outlet, this gives us uh, gives energy managers as well as facility managers a full insight into their building. So they're, they're able to understand exactly what power is being used for across all their uh, appliances. They might want to start comparing appliances as we've found in certain cases with some universities that we've uh, worked with. In, in that instance, they had a grant um, to um, to replace some of their freezers, but that grant was only provided if it was energy efficient and saved them energy. Our solution was able to pro uh, prove to the, uh, the grant that it had reduced their power consumption and they were more energy efficient uh, appliances. Um, another use case that we, we have um, is office areas for 60% of the time are unoccupied if you include weekends. What we have done in our Basildon office, we have scheduled all of our computers to turn off out of hours. We have uh, scheduled our vendor machines to turn off out of hours.
This is our Logic Plus connected power socket. Just, just want to go through the features that we have compared to a traditional socket. So you'll notice here we have our QR code. This is to allow deployment after a commissioning app. So one of Honeywell's ethos is making the customer journey seamless. So we put a lot of effort into making that journey seamless through things like the use of QR codes. Again, you can see the push buttons for the, the um, rather than the traditional rockers. We have a relay that brings in the um, uh, outlet so we can operate remotely through the BMS. If I just turn the dual gang socket over, you can see that this is certified as a traditional socket to BS1363. Have a little Bluetooth symbol because we have the, um, the Myra Mesh RF network that I talked about earlier. UK CA marks, um, such like. Because this has got electronics in, one of the challenges on building is, is the testing that gets, gets involved. So this, this isolation switch, this red switch here, allows us to disconnect the electronics so we can operate it, disconnect the electronics, test the circuit, and then we can switch it back. So we can do that without disconnecting the wiring. However, what's not so traditional is effectively this has a lot of cyber security development in it because effectively we're actually putting it into a, a Myris mesh network to talk to the builder management system. So Honeywell has looked at the standards and basically worked out how to get this thing cyber secure to allow customers and building managers to deploy this safely without any um, uh, any effects from cyber attacks um, and we, we, um, we, we do that quite a lot in Honeywell so all of our systems are um, looked at from a cyber security and we run a lot of tests so that's another unique feature about connected power. Phil can you talk to us about the specification regarding because you know you had your traditional MK socket You've now brought this into an a automated smart socket. Presumably it's exactly the same regarding the specification. We haven't moved away from Correct. that. Correct, yeah. You can see here the BS1363. So this this is this runs through the same uh, volume of tests that you would have on a 1363. The only difference is we have, like I said, the cyber, the Bluetooth, so we have to run additional tests because this, this is involved in wireless communications, you've got the Bluetooth, but yes, effectively, without the building management and without it being con um, commissioned, it will act exactly the same as the traditional socket. And that's one of the advantages. When we commission it and we either fit it in a new build or retrofit, it'll act exactly like a, uh, a traditional socket. So if we look at the system uh, as a whole overall, what we're showing at the moment, this is our, our dashboard that we have got. Um, so the trend graph that you can see at the moment, this is the total system power usage of our demo wall. The graph at the bottom is our, um, our comparison. So this is what we've used today. Um, compared to what we had used this time last week. Um, we have just done an upgrade on this demo wall, which is why we haven't got uh, any more data on it, but you would normally get a graph, a green line to, sh to compare back so you get visuals uh, very, very easy to see if you're using more energy today compared to last week. If we dive into the dashboard a little bit further, we're going to go into the devices. So this is where we can see the overall sockets um, that are connected to our system. So we have currently got um, nine sockets um, which are displayed here. We have got the total power or the instantaneous power from that socket, which can be um, filtered. So we've got it so we can see which one's using the most, which one has, is using the least. The next column along, we've got the total energy consumed on that socket since it was installed. And then we have also got the temperature sensor. So at the moment, we're looking at this as a twin switch socket but we can dive into it even further and see each individual outlet. So we can open it up. As you can see, we've got our naming conventions for that individual socket, and then we've got the retrospective uh, figures for it as well. Uh, another aspect we'd like to talk about is our ability for our alarming. So if we go into our edit of configuration aspects, we can dive in and we can actually see um, and set maximum wattage for each outlet and minimum wattage. So on this particular socket at the moment, we uh, will get alerted if it goes over 500 watts. 
Um, so that will just send an alarm directly through to our BMS. That can be as a email as well or as a text message. Um, but we can also use that alarm to, um, to trigger an event. That can automatically turn the socket off. If you wanted to, it can also automatically lock the socket off as we have got here. So it's already set up to lock off if it goes over um, 500 watts. In addition to that, we have the ability to reduce the temperature of the socket, or temperature threshold of the socket. So under the British standards, um, that says that we should have no more than 52 degrees above ambient. So on average, it should be around about 77 degrees. What we have done here, we've reduced our alarm limit to, to 50 degrees uh, centigrade. So this gives us an early indication that something might be going wrong with our socket, whether that is is uh, termination of cables have become loose or the appliance has developed a fault and is drawing more uh, more current than it should which and more which builds up of uh, resistance and that would also build up the heat so it could be various things but this will give us an early indication as to, to what's going on um, so that is our dashboard as a whole um,